This is my 2009 Honda Ridgeline, and no, it is not my dream car, okay? It is a great, fantastic car for a lot of reasons, but it's not my dream car for a lot of other reasons. And I wanna explain how this car right here is helping me to get super wealthy this year and is going to change my life for the better. Just to start, a little background on this vehicle. Again, it's from 2009. It has 108,000 miles. It has hail damage, no headliner. The passenger window doesn't roll down and it has foggy headlights, all right? It's in a used condition and I probably wouldn't get much to trade it in, maybe four or $5,000. But there are a lot of set of circumstances that make this a great car to help me to get wealthy, even though it's not my favorite. A couple great things about this vehicle is one, it's reliable. My dad has had it for 10 years and I've had it for a couple years. It is super reliable. It's a Honda, we've taken great care of it and it will probably run for another 100,000 miles or so before like probably in another 50,000 miles I have to do a major overhaul. Probably another 100,000 mile, 100, miles it might start to wear down but it is a great car and it will last for a while. The second reason is that my insurance is really cheap. I pay about like $700 I think every six months 1400 a year is not bad for car insurance and it's really doable. The third reason why this is such an awesome car for me to have, and this is a, something I would be reminisced to not highlight, is that I was gifted this car by my parents. My dad moved up into a Jeep Gladiator. His car is sweet, super awesome, but he had this vehicle that you know wasn't worth much as a trade-in, maybe four or $5,000. And instead, you know, I asked him if I could have the car, be gifted the car, so then I could forego any car payments and put myself in a better financial situation earlier. So that's what happened. And in, in our lives, we're gonna have a lot of situations like this, even though you might not have a situation like this in your car situation, but maybe you have like, someone's giving away a couch. And so instead of you buying a couch, you can have a couch. Or maybe you know someone who has a, a one bedroom available in their uh, apartment or like a, a shared room or something. There are these situations in our lives where we can take advantage of them, and I'm trying to take care of this one. So that's a little background on this vehicle. Now I wanna talk about the used and new car market before I tell you how I'm pivoting my money to get wealthy in this current bull bear situation instead of buying myself a cool car. So the current reason why I don't think it's a great time to buy a car right now is that, yeah, new cars, you can get okay rates. Used cars, the rates are a little bit higher. On average, they're about normal compared to the last you know 100 years but compared to the last couple years they're high but cars right now are being sold at expensive premiums cars right now are not good investments if i were to buy a new car i would take a lot of depreciation uh, new cars and used cars are being sold higher than normal new cars are being sold higher than msrp there's a scarcity problem for cars that people actually want and so i just see a lot of factors why this doesn't play out very well into my hand. Also, if I wanted to buy a car, I would have to put down like 20% and cars these days start at about 30 grand. So, I mean, it, I would be putting down thousands of dollars that I feel like I could invest into crypto or into stocks or into something at my current age. And it'd be much more worthwhile than buying a vehicle that I think is like a better vehicle that really is just tr me trying to like show off to the world and say, I have a cool car, right? So the TLDR of that is that the car market is not in the best situation right now. Cars are kind of scarce, especially the cars people want, and there's a lot of competition to get them. So they're selling above MSRP, they're selling at premium rates, the interest rates aren't super great, and in order to buy one of these cars that you really want are going to take quite a bit of cash to put down to get a preferable interest rate. And then some of these loans are going out for like five or six years, and I don't really want to sit with a car for five or six years, all right? So there's a lot of reasons why I don't want to buy a car. So that's kind of my vehicle, how I got to my vehicle, the current car market. Now let's talk about what I'm doing with this money instead of buying something like a car that is just going to waste the money. So what I'm doing is essentially I have, you know, maybe like a huge chunk of my investable income going into the S&P 500. I have another big chunk of my investable income going, like well, all the rest of my investable income going into Cardano and Cardano native assets and Ergo and not really Ergo native assets, but in Ergo. Then I'm taking a lot of my money and I'm saving it. I want a huge pile of cash. And yeah, I know about inflation. I know about stacking cash isn't always the best, but I have at least a six months emergency savings at any time. And right now in my current situation, I could probably take a year off from work and be financially okay. This is part of you know becoming financially independent for me. I like to have a lot of cash. I wanna have a lot of cash. I wanna be able to pay for things when things need to be paid for. And I don't wanna have to worry. I don't want to, think about when I wanna go out to eat, I don't wanna think about medical bills, I just wanna be able to pay things and get it done and get it over with, cross it off the list and get it out of my way. Another huge thing I'm doing with my money is 
setting myself up for entrepreneurial ventures. So I know that I'm not somebody who wants to work in a job for the rest of my life. I really don't like, I work remote and I sit in my apartment for like eight, nine hours a day just working. I don't work the whole time, but you know, it's like in between you work and this and that. And it's just kind of boring. I would love to be able to go golf at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. I'd love to be able to go get coffee with my parents or with my friends at 1 p.m. I'd love to be able to go to my chiropractor at like 10 a.m. I'd like to be able to do things during the day as an entrepreneur and still be able to work and not have people watching over me and giving me directions and orders and all these things. I am definitely one of those people who likes to be in charge of themselves and control their methods of money. So I'm saving money and putting it into vehicles that I can use for entrepreneurial ventures. So it's kind of like saving money, but I'm saving money with intention for the future. The last thing I'm doing with my money, which I've really just started to do, and I've really started to highlight this summer, is I am trying to enjoy it. Um, I'm relatively young still, and part of me is always thinking about saving, pinching pennies, and doing things to put myself in a better financial future, but there is an aspect to life that just needs to be lived, and I'm trying to just live life while I can, so I am using a little bit more of my money to go out to eat, go play golf, go on vacations. I'll be going to Florida in two weeks. So I'm trying to spend a little bit of money on having just fun in my life and not being so stressed out, all right? <laughs> so these are a lot of reasons why I don't need to and don't wanna have a car payment. I don't wanna move up my vehicle. I don't wanna change to something that I prefer, right? I like having all these financial things in place so that I can live a better life now, but also so I can live a better life when I'm 30 and when I'm 40. And me having a Corvette right now or something right now is not gonna help me do that and it's not gonna put me in a better position and it's not gonna make me happier. Also, when I look at my current financial situation and I have like my income, my investments, and my expenses, after all that I have about, some, some months I have about $500 on average left over for just free money I can do with whatever. But when I look at all that, if I were to add, that is with a car payment of zero, okay? So if I were to add in a, $500 car payment, well, now I have no extra money at the end of the month. If I were to add in a $1,000 car payment, which is like not that expensive of a car, it's like 50, 60, maybe 45 to $65,000 car, it's not a lot of car. It's not like you're a $100,000 car, but a $1,000 car payment is going to take all my extra money at the end of the month, my extra $500 of fun money, and it's gonna take $500 out of my investment category. Now, if I were to go out and get a $100,000 car, like a Hellcat or something, my payment would be like $1,500. That doesn't include insurance, it doesn't include maintenance, it doesn't include anything. But if I were to go buy the top level fun car that I would love to have, manual, 700 horsepower, rear wheel drive, really loud, I would have a $1,500 car payment, not including insurance, not including maintenance, not including gas, and I would have no fun money at the end of the month, and I would have no investable income. My life would be income and expenses, and that's it. I would not be putting myself any far forward on my entrepreneurial or financial freedom path. These are the decisions you have to make when you go buy a new car. That's what I'm doing with my money. Now, there's a couple reasons where I would go out and buy a different car, whether it be new or used, but there's a couple reasons where this Ridgeline is not going to be a better situation for me. The first reason is that the maintenance fees, the upkeep on a, on a yearly basis get too expensive. So probably every year or two these days, I'm gonna have to put a couple thousand dollars into the vehicle to keep it healthy and running. It is, what, 13, 14 years old now, and every couple years it's gonna need more consistent work. Like I change the oil more often. Right now when I go get an oil change, they say it'll last like 5,000 or 7,000 miles, depending on which oil you get. Sometimes mine lasts three to 5,000 miles. So I'm a little bit lower on the spectrum. Um, I have to do things probably like replace the headlights soon or get them defogged. I might have to change the rear control arm, stuff like that. So the maintenance, cars on, the maintenance costs on older cars can actually be detrimental if you keep paying them too long. So we've done those full services at 100,000 miles and we're 8,000 miles past that. I've changed the oil this year. Um, so, you know, eventually the costs of maintaining this car are gonna get so expensive that it's worth it to just go get a different car. Another reason where I would be ready to sell this car and get a new car is if I delay gratification for long enough, okay? So I just turned 25 years old and I mentally know that if I still own this car by 30, I'm gonna sell it or I'm gonna keep it and go get my fun car. By 30, I wanna have my fun car because I have delayed my gratification on buying a vehicle 
for five, six, seven years. And at that point, it's time for me to just go experience the vehicle I want, get the vehicle I want, and have a good time with it. And that doesn't mean I have to go blow the bank up, but I can get something like a used Porsche for 20,000 or a used Corvette for 20,000. I don't have to go spend 100,000 on a new Porsche, right? I can go get a new vehicle, pay for a second insurance, and have a relatively okay time while letting myself have fun with that vehicle. All right, so that's another scenario where I would be ready to go spend money to get another car if I've delayed gratification for long enough. The third reason where I'd get a new car or get a different car is if maybe this car is not working and maybe I have a wife and kids and I'm in my 30s, I would just need, or even if I'm in my late 20s with a wife and kids and I need something safer and more reliable, I just go get a new car, all right? So that's, that's kind of how I came into this car, what I'm doing with the money instead, and what kind of reasons I would do to get a different car. Some of my dream cars, if you're wondering, are like, a Corvette, a Z06, definitely every every one of these needs to be manual and low to the ground. I like Z06s, I like Vipers, I like my favorite supercar is the Lamborghini Aventador. All of these things are cars that I want and I know that if I go spend my money right now, I will have a much harder time getting those cars in the future. I'm practicing good financial habits, I'm delaying gratification, I'm using that money elsewhere to hopefully make some good money and be able to get the cars that I want in the future. I say this to people sometimes and it the quote is, I don't want the car between this car and my dream car. So think of it as I have the Ridgeline right now and I want the Aventador. Why would I wanna go from Ridgeline to Accord to Audi A5 to Audi R8 to Lamborghini? That's a lot of cars and a lot of money you're spending in between. I wanna find a way to go from Ridgeline to Lamborghini. Ridgeline to Lamborghini, all right? I wanna skip all the cars in between, and I really just wanna have this car until I'm ready to get the dream car that I want, all right? So um, hopefully that, that video provides value on what I'm doing, how I'm doing, and what I'm doing with my money, and how this car right here is helping me to actually get wealthy. It actually is in this year, 2023, and probably in the next couple years as I turn 30, all right? Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Other than that, we'll see you in the next one. Lots of Cardano and Ergo con content coming up. Also, if you want more, Threads like this, more information like this, follow me on Twitter down below. See ya.